Could you ever say that there is a greatest Fender amp ever? Let's assume that you can. Let's also assume that a lot of people have really strong, contentious opinions that are going to get into a serious debate over which one should hold this unique title. Well, what I want to do today is I want to make the case for the Fender Vibrolux Reverb that it should be in the running for said title. So let's hear some tones, and we're going to talk about the amp a little bit, hear some more tones, and we'll go from there. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy. Now, I hope you were able to deduce from the intro that, is there a greatest Fender amp ever? No. To some people there is. You know, it's certainly an opinionated question, and, and some people will have a strong opinion on which one is the best. I, my thought with the Fender Vibrolux reverb, and the reason that I approached the video this way, is because when I thought about it objectively speaking, and I thought about its features, and I thought about what it is, I thought, you know, this might just be the best Fender amp ever. And it got me going down that road. So I wanted to share with you kind of my thoughts about this amplifier, why I think that, and kind of go from there. Now, there are obviously a number of eras of Fender amplifier. There are a number of speaker configurations of wattages of you name it. And there are so many great Fender amps used by so many great players. So they're, you know, from the kind of the bottom up, you've got the early champs, you've got the Tweed Deluxes, you've got the Fender Bassman, which is also just an amp that I absolutely love. You've got the Fender Tweed Twin, among all the other many, many Tweed models that were out there later on. When you get into the Blackface series, of course, some of the most popular ones of those would be the Twin Reverb, the Princeton Reverb, the Deluxe Reverb. Then get getting into the Silverface era, and then just expanding from beyond there. And also, tip of the hat to the brown face. Don't let me forget. There's so many amps to talk about. There's no way I'm going to get them all. So do feel free to let us know what are some of your favorites, what are maybe some unsung ones in the comments. Now, I think that the Vibrolux has certainly gotten a bit of a resurgence in recent years, and some of that resurgence has come from Fender's new 68 Custom, which is a cool amp. It's a modern take on, it's not a reissue. It's a modern it inspired by model, we'll say that, and, and it kind of blends some circuits and does some cool things. That's a topic for another time. But I think that that amplifier and its usability and some of the features that are similar to the classic Vibrolux have really reinvigorated this kind of interest in this amplifier. Okay, so I'm gonna make the case for this one now. Now, if I'm looking at the best of all Fender amplifiers, am I gonna look at the 
Fender Twin Reverb, or am I going to look at the 57 Champ? Pretty big difference there, right? So you've got your kind of giant play any venue in the world unmiked with the most amazing clean tone ever, or you've got your little studio box that you can crank up and sound like Eric Clapton circa 1974. Two big differences there. So to whittle that down, I'm going to say we are going to look for something in the middle. We're going to look for something that is super versatile, something that you can take out and gig with, but something that's also not so overpowering and so loud that you can't use it in the studio. S right there, we've already narrowed down the playing field a little bit, both in wattage and size. The Vibrolux comes in at 35 watts. Next point, and this would be one of the biggest ones, I think, is what do you like for for speakers in a Fender amplifier. Now, to me, the Fender amp sound is synonymous with 10-inch speakers. I think that Fender amps with 10-inch speakers just capture the sound better than 12-inch speakers. All due respect to the people who like 12-inch speakers, I get it. I understand your points. Anything that you say, I'd totally be like, yeah, I understand why you like it that way. Just to me, the 10-inch speaker is part of the Fender sound, and when you look at some of the most classic Fender amps, 10-inch speakers are most common in them. So now I'm thinking of the Princeton, the Super Reverb, the Fender Bassman. There's something about the way that the tone is a little bit more focused. It has a little bit more compression, slightly a little bit less of that brighter and kind of really open top end. It's all just a little bit punchier, a little bit smaller sounding, but in that kind of Fender way, but it also still has that nice kind of mid scoop and a slightly tighter bass being coming out of the smaller. So if you accept that argument, now we have narrowed our playing field even more. The next thing you're going to look for in a Fender amp is how does it break up? When does it break up? What kind of tones do you get from it? Well, one of the things, this is important to mention about the Vibrolux. The Vibrolux is the smallest Fender Blackface amp that uses 6L6 power tubes. When you get below that, you get to the 6V6. There is a different sound there, especially when you're talking about cranking it. Now this one, you can crank a little easier, not just because of its wattage difference, but because of its smaller transformers than its bigger amps in this line, like the Super Reverb or the Pro Reverb or things like that. So you're going to get a little bit more breakup at a lower level with this amp than you would with something like the Super Reverb. Also, because it's two 10-inch speakers instead of four 10-inch speakers or 12-inch speakers or whatever you're talking about, it's a bit more compact, it's a bit more gig-friendly, but still plenty big and plenty loud. Also has the reverb and tremolo. Now, if you were going to get into the tweed versus blackface or silverface debate, oh, this is one where I'm almost going to defect on my own because I just absolutely love Fender tweed amps. However, nothing has great reverb like the Fender Blackface and Silverface amps. Just the reverb and tremolo is so lush and so natural that in that sense, especially if I'm looking for an all-encompassing amp, I'm going to slightly lean towards these amps, and the reason is because I don't need anything extra to go with them. With my Fender Bassman, as much as I absolutely adore that amplifier, it needs something else to give it its reverb. This one does not. This one has just some of the nicest reverb you're ever going to hear coming out of an amplifier on its own. So we've got just the right mid-size. Two 10-inch speakers. It's not too heavy. It's got enough wattage to gig and be heard, but not so high wattage that it's going to just overpower everything if you want to use it in the studio. Combine that with its small transformers, its 6L6s, and its slightly lower wattage, and you've got something that can be used great for gigging or for studio work. You've got your reverb and your tremolo built in. You also have the sound associated with the 10 inch speakers versus the 12 inch speakers. And with that, I rest my case. Please feel free to cross examine in the comments below with counterpoints or with which amplifier you think deserves to hold the title of the greatest Fender amplifier ever. In the meantime, we're gonna play some more tones here. I'm gonna show off a little bit of the reverb, a little bit of the tremolo. You've been hearing it with 
with this guitar, which is a limited edition Fender American Standard Stratocaster with a matching surf green headstock. And I have modified this guitar quite a bit with some vintage styling up here on the headstock and some Seymour Duncan Strat lipstick pickups. Also playing a Gibson ES-335. Now with a Gibson ES-335, you're hearing it with a Wampler Tumnus Deluxe for the overdriven tones. And with this guitar going into a Maxon 808, a classic tube screamer for two different flavors of drive that you can get from this amplifier. Because realistically, even though it does drive a little bit lower at lower volumes than other amps, if you're looking at it as a gigging solution, and even honestly for a lot of recording situations, it takes pedals like a champ. And that's probably the way you're going to get the best tone out of it is to use some kind of a classic overdrive. I think both tube screamers and the K style overdrives work really great with it. I do also want to mention that this one has been slightly modified. This might call for a mistrial. This one has been slightly modified in the sense where the reverb has been connected to both channels because I am running into the normal channel as opposed to the bright channel, which is slightly different than you get on some other amplifiers. For instance, on the Super Reverb, you've got the normal channel and the vibrato channel, and each have a normal or bright switch. This one has a normal channel and a bright channel. The bright channel is the one with the reverb. A very common modification is to have the reverb run into both channels on these amplifiers. I'm also, for the most part, with the exception of one clip here, plugging into the low gain input because I think these amps have a little bit of a nicer sag and a better response if you plug into the number two low gain input as opposed to the high gain input. Those of you who've watched my videos, you know that this is something that I love to do and I recommend at least trying. Whether or not you like it, it you at least want to try it because many players never even think to try it. So let's listen to some more cool tones here from this amp. Remember to leave that cross-examination in the comments because I want to know what you all have to say about what you think the best Fender amp is or conversely what is your favorite Fender amp because those things could be different. What is your favorite versus what do you think is the best? Your favorite might not necessarily be the best. For instance, my favorite Indiana Jones movie is The Last Crusade, but the best Indiana Jones movie is Raiders of the Lost Ark. You smell what I'm stepping in. Let us know what you think in the comments. Stick around for some more tones. I'm Jack Fawcett. Follow the link in the comments where you can listen to some music. You can hear some of this gear that I use in these videos and some studio recordings. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Thank mm -hmm. you.